Hello and welcome to my channel ACR MRCP. I am Dr. Aparajita Roy and in today's video we are going to talk about 10 clinical methods that you should never do in your PACES examination. So let's get started. The UK method of examination can be quite different from the clinical techniques that we have learned during our MBBS days or from clinical examination books like Hutchison. The examiners are looking for a set pattern of clinical examination from the candidates and there are some cardinal rules that the PACES candidate should never disobey. Now, these cardinal rules may not be known to the PACES candidate when they are preparing for the exam and this may lead to losing vital marks or even failing skill G that is maintaining patient welfare. If you have undergone medicine training in the UK or you have had some NHS experience before you have appeared for your PACES exam, these bedside skills or these clinical techniques will come naturally to you. However, if that is not so in your case, please watch this video till the end to know all about these mistakes and how to avoid them in your examination. Rule number one, never examine over clothes. We all know this rule, but you will be surprised to find that under the pressure of the examination, how many candidates make this cardinal mistake. This again also means that you should not overexpose the patient. And this can be quite tricky in examination of the cardiovascular system or the respiratory system. Expose only the part that you're examining and immediately cover the patient back up once you've done the examination. But under no circumstances should you put your stethoscope or your examining hand over the clothes. During your practice sessions as well as in your actual examination, please be extra careful of this step and make sure you are not examining over the clothes. Number two is never examine a tender point. Now before you start your examination, it is always a good practice to ask the patient, are you in any pain or is there any particular area which is painful? If the patient says yes, try to avoid examining over that area. However, if there is an obvious ulcer or obvious procedural site that you have to examine during your clinical station, it is always a good idea to approach that area in the end with the forewarning to the patient that I am going to examine this particular area now. Please let me know if you are any pain or discomfort and I will immediately stop. Again, it is a good practice to rehearse this several times in your practice sessions before the actual examination day. The next point is gag reflex. This is extremely uncomfortable for the patient and in under no circumstances should you try to elicit the gag reflex in your neurology station. There are far better methods to assess the function of the 9th and 10th cranial nerves like palatal movements. So, you should never attempt doing gag reflex in your neurology station. That will be a straight fail. Similarly, corneal reflex. Never attempt to touch the cornea with a cotton wool as this may lead to corneal damage for the patient or the surrogate and will lead to a straight fail for the PACES candidate. Continuing on the topic of neurology station, when you are assessing plantar reflex for your patients, be extra careful of what instrument you have chosen to elicit your plantar reflex. Under no circumstances should you use a pin or the pointed end of your tendon hammer to elicit the plantar reflex. That will definitely lead to a fail. There will always be a blunt instrument like an orange stick by the bedside. Make sure you pick that up before you start eliciting the plantar reflex. Now let's talk about the abdominal station. One thing that you should never do in the abdominal station is examine the patient in a semi-recumbent or 45 degree position. Now, this is also true if for some reason you have to examine the abdomen in your station 5. This is a mistake that I did. In my PACES examination, in my station 5 scenario, I had to examine the patient's abdomen for any possible hepatosplenomegaly. 
in the pressure situation and because I was mindful of the limited time that I had, I forgot to make the patient completely supine who was in a 45 degree or semi recumbent position till that time. Thankfully, I did not lose any marks for that. But in my feedback form, this was mentioned that, that I had forgotten to make the patient fully supine before examining the abdomen. So make sure you do not do that mistake. Next is hooking method for examination of the spleen. Many textbooks mention this and when I was practicing in India and examining patients who had mild splenomegaly, I quite found the hooking method useful when examining a spleen. But this is extremely uncomfortable for the patient as your fingernails can dig into the patient's skin and cause them pain. Do not attempt this in your PACES exam. If you suspect a mild splenomegaly, you can elicit that with percussion of the spleen. But please do not do the hooking method. Next is puddle sign. Many textbooks mention this as a method for eliciting minimal ascites. This is extremely embarrassing for the patient as well as for the examiner. And I do not think anyone does this anymore. And this is definitely not for basis exam. Also, there is something interesting that I have noted during my NHS experience that while examining pallor, the examiner does not pull both the lower eyelids of the patient at the same time. This is standard practice in India, but no one does that in here. So pull one eyelid of the patient at a time during examination of pallor. Some candidates go an extra step where they do not pull the eyelids down. Instead, ask the patient to pull their lower eyelid down themselves. Uh, it's up to you which one you want to do, but it's best to avoid pulling both the lower eyelids together. Do one eyelid at one time. In your cardiology examination, never percuss the pericardial border. It is very unlikely that your patient or surrogate will have any pericardial effusion or tamponade. Also, the patient may have some cardiac thrombus and percussing the pericardial border may lead to dislodgement of the cardiac thrombus leading to disastrous consequences. This is not routinely done in the NHS and please do not attempt this in your PACES examination. Do not routinely examine inguinal lymph nodes in your abdominal station or station 5. Go for the neck nodes first and then the axillary lymph nodes. If you find any palpable lymph nodes there, it is a good practice to then let the examiners know that I would like to examine the inguinal lymph nodes for this patient. Only if the examiners give you a go ahead, then go and attempt examining the inguinal lymph nodes. Otherwise, it's best to avoid it because it may be a bit uncomfortable or embarrassing for the patient. Let's talk about examining for tremors in station 5. Now many candidates ask whether they should place a sheet of paper on the patient's or surrogate's outstretched hands to look for tremor. This is a common practice that has been mentioned in many textbooks or books for eliciting clinical signs. However, this is not a routine practice in the NHS and it is best to avoid putting a sheet of paper on the patient's outstretched hands. If there are tremors, you will be able to see this. It might be worth bringing yourself down to the same level as the patient's outstretched hand, which will enable you to examine the tremors better, but do not uh, use a sheet of paper for examining tremor in station five. If you have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to comment and consider subscribing to my channel. Overall, uh, the essence is to maintain patient's dignity and comfort throughout your examination across all the stations. I often recommend uh, watching pre-recorded videos, for example, Pass Test or Clinical Skills Pro, which show the UK method of examination step by step very meticulously. For example, um, it is common practice for the examiner or the candidate to come down to the patient's level so that they are at the same level and the examiner or the candidate is not towering over the patient. These are little things that we acquire during our NHS clinical practice and it's always a good idea to pick up these little things from the pre-recorded videos. That's it for today guys. I hope this video has given you some insight as to the do's and don'ts in your PACES examination. Stay safe, keep studying and ace your MRCP.